Good day everyone! Today, I will be performing the IVF computation, calibration, regulation, and drug incorporation of medicine into Solucet checklist. So for the first procedure is the assessment. So first is to counter check with written doctor's order. So here, we have to check the type of solution, route of administration, rate of infusion, duration of infusion or time over which the infusion is to be completed and the physician's signature. Rationale for this is that the order sheet is the most reliable source and only legal record of medications patient is to receive. So this also ensures patient receives the correct medication. After that is to make the IV table. So here I have prepared the IV label on which it includes the name of the patient, the room number or location, the type of solution, the rate, and the nurse's signature. Next is to assess the patient's medical and medication history. So this indicates type of appropriate IV solution to be used and patient's need for medication. After that is to assess compatibility of medication with existing IV solution. The rationale for this is that medications that are incompatible with IV solutions result in clouding or crystallization of solution in the IV tubing which could harm the patient. And the next is to assess the patency of patient's existing IV infusion line. So, for medication to reach venous circulation effectively, IV line must be patent. Next is to assess IV insertion site for signs of infiltration or phlebitis. So, uh, this includes the redness, pallor, swelling, and tenderness on palpation. So, confirmation of placement of IV needle or catheter and integrity of surrounding tissue ensure that medication is administered safely. And then next is to assess patient's history of drug allergies. So effects of medication can develop rapidly after infusion. So we must be aware of patients at risk. And then lastly for the assessment, assess patient symptoms before initiating medication therapy. So this provides information to ev evaluate the desired effects of the medication. Now for the planning. So expected outcomes. Patient experiences no adverse reactions. And then medication infuses within desired time frame. Patient's IV site remain intact without signs of swelling or inflammation or symptoms of tenderness at site. And then lastly is the patient is able to explain medication purposes, action, side effects, and dosage. So now for the implementation. So first is to perform hand hygiene. This reduces transmission of microorganisms. Next is to assemble the medication and supplies at bedside. Here I have prepared the red and black ball pens, the tape or the micropore, the IV solution and the IV set or Solucet, two pieces of 3cc and 5cc syringe, a cotton balls soap and alcohol in, in covered container, and also the medicine tray. Then, compute for the appropriate flow rate, volume per hour, and the dosage of medication to be given to the patient. So, use of mathematical calculations to obtain correct rate. Microdrip tubing delivers 60 microdrops per ml, and this is used when small or very precise volumes are to be infused. Macrodrip is used when large volumes or fast rates are necessary. Next is to determine how long each solution of IV should run. So, after calculating the desired volume per hour, I will now mark the strip to indicate the anticipated fluid level at early interval. So here I have already prepared the strip and I have also calibrated. So here um, the starting infusion time is at 9 p.m. So it is in zero level. Then at 10 p.m. in my calculation, it is 83 cc per hour. And then 
at 11 p.m it's in 166 so here is the anticipated uh location or mark and until i um got to 3 a.m because the medication should run for six hours and then i also marked it with color red um pen because the time is 7 p.m to 6 59 a.m next is i will be placing the iv label on the solution container with the drops per minute So this provides a pertinent information of the name of the patient, room number, IV solution, flow rate, and signature of the nurse. Then verify patient's identity. So this improves medication safety. And then explain the purpose of the procedure to the patient or significant others. So this poses patient education. Next. I will be removing the old IV fluid container from the IV pole and quickly remove the spike from all solution container and without touching the tip. And then I will be inserting it to the new container. So this reduces risk for solution in drip chamber becoming empty and maintains sterility. Now I am going to hang the solution container to the IV pole. And then I will be checking for air in tubing and if bubbles form, I will be removing them. So gravity assists with delivery of fluid into drip chamber, checking for air in tubing, reduces risk of air embolism. Now, I will be squeezing the drip chamber gently until it is half full of the IV solution. So, this reduces, reduces risk of air entering the tubing. So, if chamber is completely filled, we cannot observe and regulate drip rate. Now, I will be regulating the flow rate according to order. So here is a one full minute of the regulation of the flow rate according to the order. So this is 83 micro drops per minute. For the incorporation of medication into Soluset, first is to make medication card. So this provides a pertinent information of the name of the patient, room number, date ordered, medication, dosage and time of administration, attending physician, and signature of the nurse. Next is to aspirate prepared dry drug with correct dose. So this prepares medication for administration. Here, I will be going to aspirate 2 ml from the sterile water as diluent for the medication in powder form. So, let's assume that this is a vial. And then, I will be getting 2 ml from it. So, I will going to aspirate first. And then, I will be getting 2 ml of the... Uh, sterile water then after that I will be putting it in the powdered form and then I will mix it by rolling it 
and when it's mixed already, I will also now aspirate uh, the calculated dosage of the medication. So here I have calculated 0 0.6 ml of the medication or the nepsin. So aspirate first. And then I will now be getting 0 0.6 of the medication assuming that there is a already a medication inside the syringe then now i will be closing the clamp on the main line this is to determine the desired amount of ivf diluents into the solute set and then i will be filling the desired IVF diluents into solute set by opening the clamp from the bottle. So usually, we add 30 ml, but it also depends upon the manufacturer. Then, I will be closing the clamp after and check to be sure that the clamp on air vent of Solucet is open. So IV medication is diluted with small fluid volume and reduces risk for rapid infusion. This also prevents additional leakage of fluid into the Solucet and air vents fa allows fluid in Solucet to exceed at regulated rate. Now I will disinfect rubber injection part of the Solucet and I will now be incorporating the drug. And then I will mix it gently. So this prevents introduction of microorganisms during needle insertion and mixing gently mixes medication with solution in solucet to ensure equal distribution. Now, I will check again if the clamp of the airway is open at the solucet and I will regulate the flow rate as ordered or per manufacturer's instruction. Now, I will be placing the IV label on the Solucet indicating that the drug incorporation or the medication is now ongoing. So this alerts nurses that medication is being infused and this prevents other medications from being added into the Solucet. Then, observe patient for any adverse reaction. So IV medications act rapidly. When drug is consumed, I will now be adding more 20 cc of IV fluid to Solucet for flushing to ensure complete administration of the drug. If the flushing is finished, I will be closing the main line and then Open the Solucet again up to 30 ml. Then I will close the airway and then regulate according to the physician's order. So this maintains patent primary IV fluids. Then I will now be discarding all waste according to hospital policy to prevent accidental needle sticks. Next is to perform hand hygiene. So this reduces transmission of microorganisms. Then after that, I will have to document all relevant information which includes IV bottle number, 
type of solution and flow rate, time the IVF administered, medication given, and the client's response. That's all. Thank you so much for watching.